Hey everyone, my name is Fezan Khan and in this video we are going to see how we can build this typing speed game. So how does this work? Let me show you. So here you can see the word. Okay, so we need to type and hit enter. So once you type and hit enter the timer starts. So it's a 60 seconds timer and on the left hand side you can see the number of words that you will type here in this text area okay so like this the count will increase so this way you can test your typing speed and here you can see the correct words that I have typed so in total I have typed 12 correct words and two wrong words so the final score is 10 and I have applied some conditions uh, to see these emojis here. So if the score is less than 15, you will see these sad emojis. And if it is greater than 15, you will see happy emojis. And if it is greater than 30, then you will see pro emojis here. Okay. And also you can see here that uh, a message box is displayed whether you want to play the game again or not. If you'll click no, the window will be closed. And if you'll click yes, uh, then the game will restart. Okay. So I hope Python and some editor is already there in your PC. It can be any editor, uh, VS Code or PyCharm. I'm going to use PyCharm here. So if you want to follow along, you can also download and install PyCharm by watching the video given in the description of this video. So firstly, what we have to do, we have to create a new project. Here you need to give a project folder name. It can be anything like a speed game and from here you can select your python interpreter it can be any interpreter go with the latest one if you want and then click on the create button and then uh, i want this project to open on a new window so i'll select new window here and once the setup is done now you need to create a python file so just right click on this folder name go to new and select python file here you need to provide python file name it can be anything i'll go with speed.py okay and here we will be writing our code so first of all we need to create the graphical user interface so let me run this original project once so you can see this is the gui look that we need to create firstly okay so firstly we will be creating a window and then we will be providing the title to it also we will be adding this icon image you can see here right okay uh, then we will be providing this much width and this much height after that we will be adding all these labels that you see uh, the text okay and then this background image and this text area okay so let's see how we can uh, create this So in order to create graphical user interface very easily, Python provides us one module which is tkinter. Okay, so we just need to import that in our code like this. So with the help of this line, now we will be able to access all the methods and the classes which are present inside this tkinter module. So basically it's a file where we have lots of classes and methods which help us in creating a GUI very easily. Okay, so just two lines we will require to create our GUI window. Okay, so firstly we'll have to create object of this TK class. So we'll assign this to some variable. This is how we create object of TK class. Here this root is an object variable name. Okay. And after that, we have to call one method of this TK class with the help of this object variable in order to see our window. So we'll write root dot main loop. So this main loop is a method which is present inside this class. And we are using this method with the help of this root object variable. Okay. And now if we will run it, we can see our GUI window. Okay. But this GUI window has this TK as the title by default and this leaf 
as an icon okay so we need to change it and also we need to change its width and the height so let's see so firstly let's go and change the title so for title we again have a method title in this tk class so we are accessing with the help of this variable okay and to this title method we have to pass the title in the form of a string so title will be speed typing game okay and after that we also need to set uh, the icon right so icon has to be of ico format okay we have png format we have jpeg format so there is one ico format for the icon okay so firstly let's uh, use the method that will help us in adding the icon so it's icon bitmap icon bitmap method so by using pycharm we are getting suggestions so this is that's why we are using this editor okay it is very helpful and here we need to mention the icon name so we will be using ico formatted image so from where you will get the image so simply open your browser and here you need to search for uh, icon dash icons dot com okay and here you can search for typing so you will be getting all these icons here and whichever you uh, like you can simply download that okay so here you can see ico format and i want to download it on uh, 32 px the smallest size okay and just click on this download button and the downloading will start once the downloading is uh, finished uh, you just need to copy uh, that image and go to your code and here you just need to paste it and change the name to icon.ic like this and now if you'll run the code again you'll see the icon image over here and we also have a title but it is not visible because the window size is small so now let's set the window size so in order to set the window size we have a method which is known as geometry inside this tk class and we are using that geometry method okay and to this method we have to pass the width and the height so i'm gonna take 700 as the width and 600 as the height okay and now if i'll run it you can see the window size is increased okay uh, and we also have this maximize button through which we can maximize our window but i want to disable it so that our window is of fixed size and no uh, one will be able to maximize it or minimize it or even drag it okay so for that uh, i'm gonna use one more method which is resizable and here we just need to pass false value for the width and false value for the height 0 comma 0 or you can also pass here uh, false comma false so now if you see uh, maximize button is disabled and you will not be able to drag it okay after this whenever i'm running this code you can see the window is getting placed at different positions from your screen right uh, every time you will run it you'll see its different positions so i want to fix it so for that i just need to add distance from the x-axis so i'll place it at a distance of 250 from the x-axis okay and at a distance of 100 from the y-axis from the top screen okay so now if i run it you can see let me decrease it to 50 instead of 100 yeah now it's fine okay next thing is that we need to provide background color to our window okay the color that i have used in my original project is gold 2 so i'm going to use the same color here so for providing the color we again have a method which is known as config or configure both will work in the same way so i'm going to use config and here i just need to add background color and the color name 
okay so bg equals to gold 2 so gold 2 is one of the color that we can use in tkinter if i run it so this is that color and which colors you can use in tkinter for that you just uh, need to open your web browser and just search for tkinter colors and from here you can simply download any one of the images you can simply right click and save this image and you can check uh, the colors that you want to use okay i'm going to use gold too okay this is done after that i want to add logo image just like you can see here this is the logo image that i have used in my original project okay so this logo image uh, you can get it from google only so you can search uh, on google any image of your choice and you can simply use that uh, so the images that i download uh, mostly from uh, flat icon website so simply search flat icon and visit this website and from here you can simply search for anything like clock and you will get the result and from here you can download any image of your choice suppose this one so just click here and select the size i have used 250x uh, 256 px okay in my original one so from here select the size and click on this free download and if you want to use the image that i have i have used in my original one okay uh, you can get uh, these images from the description of this video so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna copy the one that i have used in my original project the same image so this is that image logo.png it's a 256 cross 256 png so i'm gonna simply copy it and i'll paste in this one so just control v and paste it so this is the image that i'll be adding okay so in order to add image on your window firstly you need to create a label okay and make sure this root dot main loop line is at the bottom okay if you'll write anything just after this that code won't be executed for example if i write print hello so you won't see anything getting printed here okay you can see uh, the print statement is not working because uh, main loop method is simply keeping everything on a loop so after this line number 11 again line number 3 is uh, getting repeated okay so this is the code execution okay again and again this part of code is getting executed only okay but once you'll close the application uh, then the last line will be executed so once i close the application now you can see the print statement worked okay so make sure you write everything between uh, this main loop and this tk okay everything that you want on your screen so firstly we will be creating a label and on that label we will be adding this image okay so uh, let's create a label so it will be a logo label and label is created with the help of a label class and to this label class we need to pass that where you want to see this label i want to see this label on my screen so screen name is root here so i'll pass root here after that uh, whether you want to add text on this label or image so i want to add image so i'll pass image keyword argument and the image name so image name will be uh, logo image okay which is not yet defined okay so this image we need to import in our code okay so the way of importing this image in our code is uh, by using photo image class so this is photo image class and to this class we'll pass the file name and the file name is uh, logo.png okay and we'll provide object variable name to this image which will be logo image the one that we have passed here okay so now this image is represented by this variable so, and this variable we have passed to this image okay so our label is created if i run it you won't be able to see any label the reason is you have just created the label but you have not placed it on your screen i mean where you want to see this label 
at the top at the bottom left right at which particular position you have to mention that also so we'll use logo label dot place method which is used to place something on your screen okay here you need to pass x coordinate values and y coordinate values so x value is 220 and y value is 50 these are the values that i have used in my original project so i'm using the same values but you can play with these values you can decrease or increase the values to see where your logo image is getting placed okay so this is how it looks and we also need to change the background color of this label to that of our window okay so here we have gold 2 as the color so we'll add the same color to this label also so that we don't see that white color so we'll add bg equals to gold 2 okay so this is how it looks i hope this is clear to you so logo image is perfectly added after that what we need to add let's check our original project now let's see how we can add this text moving text welcome to typing speed game okay so again it's a label only and on that label the text is added so firstly we will be creating a label and on that label we will be adding the text okay so just after creating this logo label let's add that moving label okay this is the name that i'm providing it so it's again a label it will be inside my root window only right uh, this time instead of image we'll be adding the text but uh, i'll be initially not adding any text i'll keep it empty or let me just add some text welcome to typing speed game okay and yeah after that uh, we need to simply place it so we'll be using place method in order to place something on our screen so x value i'll provide as 0 and y value as 10 let's run so we are seeing this here okay we also need to change the background color same as that of our window and we need to increase the font and provide a styling to it firstly let's change the background color to gold too then let's change the font so the styling that i'm going to use is arial size of the text 25 and i'll make the text as bold italic okay so this is the font and this is how we provide font to our text okay it has to be in the form of a tuple where first value will be the styling then the size and then whether you want it bold italic or italic underline or underline whatever okay so now if i run it okay so we are getting error i need to provide a space here bold italic okay so this is how it looks after that i'll uh, provide some width to this uh, label so let me move it to a new line here width equals to 35 okay so this is now at the center uh, next thing is that I need to change the text color. So for text color, we have to use FG and provide the color name. So I'm going to use red. Okay, this is similar to our, uh, this is similar to uh, what we used in our original one. Okay, uh, but uh, the thing is that this text is not moving. Okay, it is constant. We need to move it. So what is the way? I'm going to call one function here and the function name is a slider okay and we'll write the code to move this text in this particular function a slider so we'll define this function at the top here uh, actually we'll define all our functions at the top only so this is nothing but the GUI part and here we'll be adding the functionality 
part okay so first function is slider so instead of directly adding the text here we'll add this text inside this function slider so we will be creating one variable here and we will add that text inside this variable so this variable text is storing the complete text now i'll create one variable here which will be empty initially so it's nothing but a string variable and inside this variable we will be adding one by one each letter okay so i'll update this variable and we'll add this text letters into it so i'll use the slider words plus text and in brackets i'll pass one variable which will simply store the position of each letter so inside this variable initially i'm gonna store zero okay so if initially inside this variable zero is there then text of zero will represent this first letter w okay here you can see we are seeing this red line which is giving us an error if i try to run it we'll see an error and the error is that local variable is slider words reference before assignment okay so we are referring this variable here right so in order to modify the variables value which are defined outside the function so we'll have to make them global so global slider words and now if i run it what will happen you won't see anything but the error is gone right so i hope you are able to understand that initially inside this slider words we have nothing means no string and after that we are adding w inside it so this variable will store w okay and now we need to update this moving label with this particular text which is there inside this slider words okay which is w so we'll use a moving label dot config method which is used to update something and here we'll update the text and the text will be whatever is there inside this slider words variable if i run it you will see w here right so now i'm going to call this slider function repeatedly after a few milliseconds you will see what will happen so i'm going to use this moving label dot after method and after 250 milliseconds i'll call this slider function so now if i run it you can see what is happening here okay it is simply updating this moving label right after 250 milliseconds so let me explain you again what is happening so when this function is getting called firstly uh, this text variables first letter which is w is getting added inside this slider words variable right as i have already told you and that is getting updated on our moving label and after that we are again calling this slider function and updating this moving label after 250 milliseconds so this slider words already contains w text of count again refers to w only so w will be concatenated with w and inside this slider words we will be getting this ww right and that ww will be simply updated on this moving label and again after 250 milliseconds uh, this slider function will be called and w will be added to this slider words and it will be updated on this moving label so that's why you were seeing this w w w w right we can increase or decrease uh, this uh, time after how many milliseconds you want to call this slider function if you will uh, add 1000 here it means after one second you will see the changes on that moving label right okay but uh, we don't have to see ww right 
we have to see the second letter then the third letter and so on right so what i'm going to do i'm simply going to update this count variable value okay so here i'm simply going to write count plus equals to one okay since we are updating uh, the value of a variable which is uh, defined outside the function we need to make it global so here we'll simply make it global okay and since we have updated its value by one so initially there will be w when the function will run for the first time its value will be updated by one so it will now refer to this e okay so when you will uh, when this function will be called after one second then uh, e will be added inside this slider words variable and that will be updated on this label okay then again this function will be called its value will be increased by one so it will refer l so l will be added here and this way it will continue so i hope you are able to understand it after w we'll see e l c o m e and so on okay now let's see what will happen at the end when the text will reach the end so once it reaches the end you can see uh, that it stopped moving okay and also we got an error that string index out of range okay so what it means that this function is continuously running and now we don't have any further letters inside this string okay this is what error means so what i'm going to do i'm going to apply a condition here that if uh, count variable value is greater than or equal to length of this text if this is so it means we have reached the end and in that case i will again change the value of this count variable to zero and will remove all the words which are there inside this slider words and will make it empty like this so now if i'll run it and before running it let me just decrease the time so let me just do it 200 milliseconds so if i run it you can see that once it will reach the end it will again continue from the start so i hope uh, this is clear so when the count value will reach the end which will be equal to the length of this string right in that case i am setting back the count value to zero which will again refer to this w and in a slider words we won't have anything it will be null right so it will again start from the starting so after this let's add this word label here where we will see different words right so i'll be creating a label here after this slider function so that will be nothing but word label and as you know label is created with the help of a label class then where you want this label i want to see this label on my window so i'll pass root object here after that we will add the text and as you know the text will vary there we will see different words so i'll pass one list here and inside this list we will be adding all those words okay so i'll create one list here at the top or anywhere wherever you want and inside this list you can simply add whatever words you want to keep in a list okay like keyboard mouse eagle animal and so on so you can see here i have created the list of words that i will be typing during the game and now i'm simply gonna uh, place this word label so i'll write word label dot place method x value will be 350 y value will be 350 now if i run it so you can see we are seeing all the words that are there inside that particular list okay and some are going outside of this screen as well okay but we don't have to see 
all these at once okay we want to see it one by one so i'm simply going to pass the first word of that list to this text and now you will only see the first word which is keyboard here you can see right so every time when i'll run this code i want to see a different word here okay right now every time you will run you will see keyboard here only but i want to see a different word so for that i am simply going to import one module which is random and this random module has one method which is known as shuffle which will simply shuffle uh, this list okay and every time you will see different word at index 0 and that we will be adding on this word label so just before it here we'll use this module random dot shuffle and to this shuffle method we will be providing the list which we want to shuffle okay so here we'll pass this word list and uh, this will simply shuffle that list and every time uh, at index 0 there will be a new word and that will be updated on this uh, word label okay so if i run it this time you can see television is there if i run it again you will see keyboard okay so i hope this is clear after that i want to add font for this text so styling i'm going to use black cooper size of the text is 38 and i'll make it italic bold okay this is the font i have used in my original project but you can use whatever font you like so if i run it now you can see that the font is changed okay let me change the background color of this label so that it can match the background color of a window so here i'll pass bg equals to gold 2 like this okay and one more thing i want to put this text in the center okay for that i'm gonna use anchor and its value will be center okay so every time you will see the text at the center position so after this what we need to create we need to create this words label okay then this particular label where we will see the score then this timer label and this timer value label okay and we'll place them here at this particular position and to this particular position so let's see so instead of calling uh, this label as word label we'll call it word list label okay and the next label that we are going to create will be word label okay we'll, we'll display the text word okay and it will be created with the help of a label class we'll pass root object then the text will be words okay after that i'll provide font for this particular text so styling i'm going to use is castler size of the text will be 28 and i'll make the text as bold and then i'll simply place it so i'll use word label dot place method x value will be 10 and y value will be 150 let's see where it is getting placed yeah so here it is getting placed we will increase some x value here so instead of 10 i'll make it 30 yeah now this is fine after that we'll change the background color of this label to gold 2 so here i'll pass bg equals to gold 2 after that we will create a score label where we will display how many words you have typed okay so that label will also be created in a similar way so i'm simply copying it and will paste here so instead of word label i'll change the name to count label and in pycharm you can place place multiple cursors with the help of alt key and mouse left button so if you want to do changes at two positions uh, you can simply 
uh, place multiple cursors okay so here uh, the text will be zero initially okay and everything else will remain same then uh, we'll change the place values x and the y values so x value uh, will be changed to 80 and y value will be changed to 180 so here you can see that the words are overlapping so i'll simply decrease some y value here and instead of 150 i'll keep it 200 yeah this is fine apart from this uh, there is a mistake in the spelling of Kessler. Uh, it would be A. Yeah, so this is the font style. Okay, and also here, uh, this is not uh, black Cooper, uh, but Cooper black styling. Okay, that's why we are not seeing the correct styling here. So instead of black Cooper, this will be Cooper black. Yeah, this is the correct styling just like we did here in the same way we have to do it here okay and the label text will be timer and by default the value will be 60 so we can simply copy these two labels and paste them here and then do the changes so this is nothing but timer time label okay uh, let's change the text to timer okay and then this will be time count label okay and initially the text will be 60 we also have to do changes in this x and the y values so in my original project i have used 500 and 10 as the x value and 100 will be the y value so if i run it again you can see the timer okay and this time count label x value will be uh, 560 and y value will be 180 only yeah so we are seeing this text here and now the next thing that we need to create is this entry field where we will be typing these words okay so entry field is created with the help of an entry class okay and we'll name this entry field as uh, word entry and this entry has to be on our root window so we'll pass root object and firstly let's place it so word entry dot place method uh, x value that I'm going to use is 190 and y value as 390 let's see where we are seeing this okay so here we are getting our entry field okay and this is the font for the text that we are typing right now so we need to change it so here we'll pass font for the text styling is Arial size is 25 and the text is bold okay apart from this we will also add border to this entry field bd for border which will be 8 pixels yeah so this is how it looks after that i want to place this cursor uh, at the center position okay for that uh, we'll pass justify equals to center so now you will see the cursor blinking at the center and you will type from the center position okay and uh, after that one more thing that uh, whenever i'm running this code okay i have to click uh, in this entry field and then start typing okay but what I want whenever I run this code the cursor should be already blinking here so that I can just simply uh, start typing the words instead of clicking first and then typing for that I'll have to use one method so I'll use this word entry dot focus set method 
okay so this will automatically place the cursor blinking at the center position now you just have to start typing instead of firstly clicking here right so i hope you are able to get understand it and instead of 190 i'll change this value to 160 yeah so now it is at the center position okay and just below this entry field we have to add one text uh, where the text is type word and hit enter okay so we'll again create a label and on that label we will add that text so we can copy any label from here because the label will be created in the similar way and here we'll paste that label this will be instruction label okay and the text will be type word and hit enter okay uh, if you want to keep the styling to Kessler, you can keep it. But I have used Chiller in my original project. So I'll show you how it looks like. Okay, so this is not placed here. Uh, we need to change uh, this X and the Y values. So X value is 210 and Y value is 460. Okay. And also the spelling here is E instead of A. So yeah, this is how it looks. You can change its uh, text color to red if you want. Okay. Uh, I have used red in my original one. So I'll add red here. FG equals to red. FG stands for foreground color. Okay. And the last thing that we need to add is the emoji. On the left hand side and the right hand side so if your score will be less than 15 you will see sad emojis on both the sides if it is greater than 15 you will see happy emojis and if it is greater than 30 you will see pro emojis okay with glasses so let's uh, simply create the labels okay but we won't be displaying the emojis initially so we will be creating two labels, one on the left hand side and the other on the right hand side. And on those two labels, we will be adding the emojis. Okay. So uh, we'll create emoji one label with the help of a label class and it will be inside my window. And this time instead of adding the text, I'm going to add image on a label. Okay. But from where we will get the image so again you have to go to this website icon-icons.com and here you can search for emoji from here you can download one happy emoji one sad emoji and one pro emoji okay with glasses you can simply search here glass emoji and you will get the result okay so from here you can download one of these images okay and you have to download 64 cross 64 png which i i have downloaded okay or you can go with the bigger size whatever you want okay depends on your choice so i already have taken uh, the images from my original project and i'm simply going to paste them here so these are the emojis happy emoji uh, poor emoji and this is the pro emoji and these are 64 cross 64 png so i'll be providing all these images uh, in the description of the video from there you can download if you want to use the same emojis okay so uh, we cannot use this image directly okay firstly we need to import this image in our code we have to create object of these images and then we can uh, use it okay so here uh, we'll write poor pick equals to photo image class and here we'll mention the file name which is poor.png okay so this is how we import the image this is how we create object of this image okay so this pro poor pick is nothing but the object and this image is now represented with this variable and this variable we can pass here poor pick okay and after that we have to 
place it so image uh, emoji one label dot place method here we need to pass the x and the y value so x will be 80 y will be 490 i'm using the original project values here so if i run it you can see the emoji here right and the same emoji i need to see here as well okay so i'm gonna create one more label and i'll call it emoji to label and here i'll change the x value to 540 and y will remain same because it has to be at the same height as this emoji one label okay so now if i run it you can see and similarly if you want to see pro emojis or good emoji uh, then uh, you will have to import it uh, in the same way so i'll simply copy this line two times more uh, with the help of ctrl d in pycharm okay and i'll change the name to good pick and pro pick and here i'll pass the file name so this will be good.png and this will be pro.png okay and if i'll pass a uh, pro pick here instead of poor pick then we'll see pro pick there okay but this we will change uh, based on the condition that we'll see later so currently we don't have to add image here we'll keep it without any image or text okay uh, but we are seeing uh, this line here okay which is just showing that this is a label so we'll simply uh, change its uh, background color to match it uh, with this window so that you don't see anything and you get a feeling that nothing is there okay so i'll change the background color to gold too okay so now uh, we can't see anything there okay so our gui part is ready and now let's see the functionality part so this is the original project firstly let me show you what functionality we have to create so we have to type a word and hit enter once i do that you can see the below text has been removed the timer is started and this represents how many words you have typed so whenever i'll type a word its value will increase okay so this is the functionality that we have to add apart from this once the timer will be over uh, you will see the result here at the bottom that too we have to add okay so i'm gonna bind the enter key with a function so i'll write root dot bind method and here i'll bind the enter key which is represented by return and i'll call a function so the function name will be play game or anything it's up to you so whenever you will press the enter key this particular function will be called and i'll define this function at the top and i'm simply going to print hello firstly okay so now if i run this code and if i hit enter you can see we are getting one error and the error says play game takes zero positional arguments but one was given so whenever we bind any keyboard key to a function one value is passed from the key to that function and we need to receive that value in some variable okay for example event this is a variable which is receiving the value coming from that particular key so this has no use in our code but it is important to store that value in some variable okay so now if i run it and press enter key you can see whenever i'm pressing the enter key hello is getting printed okay so basically this function is getting called 
and whatever code is there that is getting executed so hello is getting printed on the console but we don't have to print hello so what we have to do whenever i'm pressing the enter key it means i have typed the word there in the entry field and i'm pressing the enter so whenever i am doing that the word count value should increase right so if you see uh, this count label initial value is zero i'll increase it whenever i'll press the enter key right so i'll take one variable i which has zero value initially and whenever i'll be pressing the enter key its value will be increased by one okay and uh, since we are modifying the variable value okay which is defined outside so in order to do that we have to make that variable as global so we'll write global and i okay now uh, this variable value can be modified inside a function after that we can simply update this value on this particular label this count label okay so here i'll write count label dot config and we'll simply update the text to i variable okay so now if i run it and after typing the word if i hit enter you can see that the value is getting updated here the text is getting updated right and similarly if i hit enter again you can see the value is getting updated and so on it will be updated whenever you will press the enter key okay so when i'm pressing the enter key i also want this text to be deleted from here so that i can type the next text uh, and also we'll have to uh, provide the next text here right so let's see so firstly uh, let's just shuffle uh, that uh, list word list again okay so that we after hitting the enter we should see some other word uh, there okay so i'll use this label where we have uh, added that word list okay so this is that label word list label i'm going to use this word list label dot config and i'm simply going to update the text to uh, this word list and the first element okay whichever word will be here but if i run at this stage you will see whatever word is there already that word will be displayed whenever you will press the enter key okay it won't change okay so in order to change it we again have to shuffle the list first and then we need to update it on our word list label so here we'll shuffle it so we'll write uh, random dot shuffle and we'll pass this word list to it okay so firstly what will happen whenever you will press the enter key word list will be shuffled so at first uh, index you will see a different word and that word will be simply updated on this word list label okay let me show you so if i type this word and hit enter you can see a new word is getting displayed on this word list label okay and now i can rub it and i can type this word again and hit enter we'll get the another word okay so i hope you are getting it uh, and yeah as i already told you what we need to do that after hitting the enter this word should be deleted from here so for that we'll use this entry field and the entry field name is uh, word entry right so we'll use this word entry here word entry dot delete method and we have to pass from where to where you want to delete so from starting till end we have to delete everything okay oh sorry we are adding at the wrong place uh, we have to add this in this particular function right like this now if i run it if i hit enter you can see the text is getting deleted right like this so i hope you are able to understand it okay 
so what is happening whenever you are hitting the enter key firstly i value is getting increased by one and that is getting updated on this count table after that uh, word list is getting shuffled so every time at index zero we will see a different word and that we are simply updating on this word list label and then we are deleting the word that we have typed on the word entry so that we can type the next word so i hope this is clear to you and now let's work on the functionality of this timer so we need to decrease its value by one after every one second so when i'll enter for the first time after writing the word this value should be decreased by one after every one second so i'm simply gonna call one function here which will be timer and we need to define this function so i'll define it at the top so def timer okay so here what i'm going to do firstly i'm going to take one variable time left and initially it is storing 60 value okay and inside this function i'll simply decrease this time left value by one okay and since we are modifying its value so we'll have to make it global so after decreasing time left value by one then we need to update this value on the label okay and the label was uh, this time count label okay so we'll use this time count label dot config method and we'll update the text to uh, this time left okay so initial value is 60 there and when this timer function will be called for the first time its value will be decreased by one so it will become 59 and that 59 you will see on this time count label if i run it uh, if i hit enter you can see the value is decreased by one okay now if i hit enter you can see the value is getting decreased uh, whenever i am hitting the enter key but i don't want this thing to happen the value should automatically decrease by one after every one second right so what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna call this function after every one second so how can i do it so i'll use this time count label dot after method and after one second which is 1000 milliseconds okay this represents one second so after one second i'm gonna call this timer function again so what will happen uh, its value will again uh, decrease by one so it will be 58 and that will be updated on this time count label and then again after one second its value will uh, decrease by one and it will be updated on time count label and so on i hope you are getting it uh, this uh, after method we have already used uh, when we were doing the functionality of this slider function right in the same way this after function will work here okay so after every one second timer function will be called and timer left value will decrease by one and that will be updated on this time count label now if i run it so if i hit enter you can see its value is getting decreased by one okay after every one second now the issue is that if i hit enter again you can see what is happening okay so whenever i'm hitting the enter key this play game function is getting called this timer function is getting called right and inside this timer function uh, we are simply uh, updating the time right after every one second so whenever you will press the enter key again and again this timer function will be called which is creating some problem there in updating the label right so what i want i want this timer to start only once when we are hitting the enter key for the first time so what i'll do i'll apply a condition here that if time left 
value is equals to equals to 60 so when time left is 60 right then only call this function okay when time left value will be 59 or 58 or 57 then i don't want to call this function okay otherwise uh, it will create issue so now if i run it so when i am hitting the enter key for the first time the timer has been started okay now if i hit the enter key again uh, nothing will happen to this timer okay uh, this code is not now getting executed again and again okay when i'm hitting the enter key so i hope this is clear to you okay and now after this uh, what will happen uh, when this timer will reach zero let me just show you So you can see it is continuously uh, decreasing its value and now it has gone into negative values. Okay. So we have to apply some condition that uh, once it reaches the value zero, uh, it should stop. Right. So what uh, we can do. So inside this function only. Uh, we'll apply a condition uh, that if. if time left is greater than zero okay then only execute this particular code and if it is going less than zero then i'll freeze the entry field so that nobody can type for the words and also will calculate uh, what is the score and will display the score okay so i'll write word entry dot config method and i'll change the state of it to uh, disabled okay so that once the timer is over once the timer is zero uh word entry will be freezed and you will not be able to type anything okay let me show you so i'll start the timer So you can see once it reaches zero now uh, i'm not able to type any word here right and the timer has stopped okay because once the value will be uh, less than zero or equal to zero then uh, only the else part code will be executed and it will simply disable the state of word entry field okay so i hope you understood it apart from disabling the state we also have to do one thing so when i'll press the enter key in my original project let me show you so when i'll write the word and will press the enter key uh, you can see the below red text is hidden right it is removed so inside this play game function when i'm hitting the enter key i want this particular text to be removed uh, this particular text instruction lab label text right so inside this function play game okay uh, we can do it here just after deleting the word from the entry field so i'll write instruction label dot config and i'll update the text to null string okay so now you won't see any text when i'll press the enter key so i'm writing grapes and hitting the enter key you can see the text is removed okay and now let's see how we can calculate the number of correct words and the number of wrong words a user is typing okay so for that we'll be applying condition here that if a word entry dot get equals to equals to word list label of text so what i'm doing here whatever the word is there on the word list label i'm comparing it with the word that you are typing in the word entry so from word entry i'm getting that word and checking if it is equals to the word that is there on this word list label 
if it is equal it means you have typed the correct word so i'll increase one variable value uh, which will be correct word plus equals to one okay and i'll define this variable outside this function and we'll initially assign zero value to it okay and we also need to make it global like this i hope this is clear and in the else part we'll increase some other variable which is wrong words by one and we'll assign initial value as zero okay and we also have to make it global like this so if you are writing the correct word then correct word variable value will be increased by one and if you are making mistake then the else part code will be executed and wrong word value will be increased by one okay but we have to add this particular code just after the condition why i am doing this so if I'll be adding this particular code just above this condition as it was already added. What will happen? Uh, the word will be deleted firstly, okay, from the entry field. So we won't be able to compare it with the wordless label. Okay, so that's why we are deleting uh, the word from the entry field after the comparison is done okay so i hope you are getting it and then once the timer is over then uh, we'll simply calculate the result and we'll display it on the label which label uh, this instruction label okay so once the timer is over we'll simply go to the else part and here we can uh, store the result inside this result variable so what we'll do we'll uh, take this correct word and from it we'll subtract the wrong words okay so we'll get the result the final score okay and now we'll take this instruction label and we'll update the text of this instruction label i'll use f string here so correct words and in brackets we'll use this variable uh, correct word okay and then new line character then wrong words and wrong words are stored inside this wrong word variable so we'll pass here wrong word okay and then again new line character then the final score and the final score is inside this result variable okay let me minimize it so that you can see the complete code properly okay so now if i run it and show you what will happen so here you can see the result correct words 22 wrong words 4 and the final score is 18 okay so we are seeing the result here once the timer is over after that uh, i also want to see the emojis here on the left hand or the right hand side if the score is less than 15 then the sad emojis if the score is greater than 15 uh, then good emojis smiley emojis and if the score is greater than 30 then the pro emojis okay and after that we'll display a message box that do you want to play this game again okay so if the user will say yes we'll reset everything and if it will be no then we'll simply close the window so let's see how we can do it so firstly let's write the code uh, to display the emojis okay so i'll write here that if uh, result 
is less than 15 okay so if the final score is less than 15 then we'll simply update the image of this particular label uh, emoji one label and emoji two label okay with this poor pick so we'll go here inside the function and here we'll write emoji one label dot config and here we'll update the image to poor pick okay same way we'll do it for emoji to label so we'll write emoji to label dot config and we'll just change the image to poor pick okay so on the left and the right hand side you will see poor pick if the result is less than 15 okay in the same way we'll do it for other two conditions so if result is greater than 15 okay we'll simply add good pick okay and if it is greater than 30 if result is greater than 30 in that case we'll display pro emojis pro pick okay so i hope you have understood it and after that i'll also display a message box but you can see this error because this message box is not imported so we have to import it from tkinter so we'll write from tkinter import message box like this and once you import message box the error is gone and we have to use one method of it which is ask yes no okay this method will return either true or false so if uh, you will press yes then it will return true otherwise false okay first thing we have to pass title so title will be confirm and then the message message will be do you want to play a game okay so if you'll uh, click yes then it will return true value otherwise false value that we can store in some variable like res for result okay and then we'll check that if res is true or not so if res is true it means you want to play again so if you want to play again then we'll reset everything so firstly we will set uh, this label value back to zero uh, where is that uh, this particular count label okay and we'll set this time count label back to 60 okay so here I'll write count label dot config and the text will be set back to zero. After that, time count label dot config and we'll change the text to 60. Okay. Let me firstly show you till here what will happen. And before running the code, let me just change the time left value to 10. So that we don't have to wait for 60 seconds to complete right so here we have to do the change and then here also we will have to do the change when the value is 10 then only start the timer function okay so once i type this you will see the timer has started okay and you will see what will happen when the once the timer is over So you can see I have typed three correct words and two wrong words and the final score is one. And since the score is less than 15, so we are seeing these sad emojis here. And we also seeing this message box, right? Do you want to play again? So if I'll press yes, what will happen? You can see this is set to zero and this is set to 60. This is what we wanted. Apart from this, what else we want? We want to enable the state of this entry field so that we can start typing inside it right uh, it's still disabled and then we'll update this text to uh, type the word and hit enter right and we'll also remove these emojis from here right so let's do these changes so firstly i'll make the word entry state to normal
like this so we'll use the config method to update the state of our word entry okay so you will see uh, that the state will become normal and you will be able to type inside that after that uh, you want to uh, update the message of this instruction label right so you have to update the text to this type word and hit enter so i'll copy the text from here and here i'll write uh, instruction label dot config and the text will be this type word and hit enter after that i want to uh, hide the emojis right so i'll write uh, emoji one label dot place forget which is used to uh, remove the place okay of that label similarly emoji two label dot place forget okay so this way we can hide any label now let's run again and see if i press yes what will happen you can see type word and hit enter text is updated and this is changed to 0 this is changed to 60 now if i again start playing you can see that this is the old score is still getting displayed here right so what we have to do and the timer is not started so we'll have to fix it so what we'll do when you are pressing yes okay in that case uh, we'll change the value of i variable to zero okay and this is the same i variable that we have used here to update the count label value okay so we'll have to make it global okay so that this uh, variable value can be used inside this function so here i'll make it global okay i hope this is clear to you and also the timer didn't start right that is because we'll have to change the time left value to 10 right now okay we'll change it back to 60 once we are done with this project okay so let me again run and show you So now once I click yes, you can see uh, this is 0, this is 60 and if I again start typing, again uh, it is starting from the start, right? So I hope now this is clear and it is perfectly fine. But this time you can see we are not able to see the emojis here. Uh, this is because uh, the place is forgot and we have to provide new place values so instead of uh, adding place forget method uh, what we can do we can simply update its uh, image to null right so we'll use uh, emoji one label and emoji two label dot config method and here we'll pass the image as null value okay so now i think it uh, will work fine So if I play again, so yeah, now you can see we are able to see the emojis. And the final thing that I want to add is uh, without typing any word here, if I press enter key still the timer has started okay if i hit enter again you can see the words are changing and it is simply calculating the words so if it is empty and if i am trying to press enter key it 
should not uh, move to the next word right or it should not start the timer so i'm gonna simply apply a condition inside this function uh, play game and here i'll simply check that So I'll simply provide indentation as so if uh, on the word entry you won't get any string then this particular code will not be executed okay so let me run and show you so if I don't write anything and try to hit enter nothing will happen okay so I hope you are able to understand it and now we can change back the values of time left from 10 to 60. So yeah, that's it for this project. I hope you understood everything. Once you complete this project, let me know in the comment section that you have completed.